Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Savannah Playford, the Director of Youth Ministry at Dixon United Methodist Church. Whenever you are watching this, welcome to today's daily devotion. We are in the time of Lent. We are preparing for Jesus' death and the resurrection on the cross that comes with Easter. I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. It is during this time that Christians oftentimes will deny themselves of something and then also should be adding something back into their lives. We should, in the end, be putting our thoughts and our beliefs into action, right? We need to be prepared for Jesus' coming. And that is exactly what chapter 1 of Ephesians is all about. The book of Ephesians is written by Paul, where he is addressing the church of Ephesus. But really, what he is addressing can be felt by the whole world, especially now. Chapter 1 of Ephesus can be broken down into two different parts. In the first part, Paul describes the blessings that can come to believers when they follow Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to talk about prayers of thanksgiving and prayer for his readers. That's us. So this is what it says in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 through 20. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, this is the reason that I do not stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. The power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. That's kind of a lot to break down. But first, Paul is saying that he's keeping the church of Ephesus in his prayers. But again, really all of us are in his prayers. Paul, Paul doesn't just preach at these people, but he prays for them too. I recently had a conversation with a friend and we were talking about how oftentimes as believers, when we hear that someone is going through something difficult, we say, oh, I'll pray for you. But then we go and we get distracted or by the time it comes time for us to sit down and pray, we've already forgotten that we were supposed to pray for them. It's human and it's normal and it's just kind of part of life. But instead, try to commit to praying for that person right there in that moment, right? So then you don't forget about it. You can just say a small prayer so you don't have to forget. Anyway, so Paul mentions here when he is praying that he is praying about what specifically? Well, he is praying for a few different things, specifically for the church of Ephesus or for us. He prays that God will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to us. So Paul has a desire for us to know God. He then goes on to pray that he hopes that we can see, feel, and experience God's call. It's important to remember that God's call is not just to love and to worship him forever, but also to love and help out his creation. That means the earth and animals, but more importantly, each other. That is our call, to love one another and to serve the Lord. Why? Because God's overwhelming power is working in each and every one of us. And that is Paul's prayer to us and also my prayer to you. So it's time to take those prayers and turn them into action. So if you're praying that you might see some of your friends or relatives soon, call them up and set up a time. Set up a FaceTime date or maybe a call or look at different options to meet safely. If you're praying to God that this pandemic will end soon, well, put it into action. Do your part to stay safe and keep other people safe. If you're praying for a specific friend, call them and let them know. If you're praying for someone else to come to church, reach out to them and share the good news of the gospel. It's time for us to turn our prayers into actions. It's time for us to look and see what Paul wants for us, which is to see God's calling. So today, think about two, one or two different things that you have been praying about and take action on them. God will send the Holy Spirit to guide you and to guide your prayers.